With a senior-led squad, the Portland Pilots made another step forward in their quest for a WCC championship, finishing third in the regular season and tying the school record for Division I wins with 21. The Pilots played in the CollegeInsider.com tournament for the second consecutive season, marking the first time in school history the Pilots have played in two straight postseason tournaments. Well, so Eric, let's start with your senior class. I mean, what an extraordinary class you had the chance to work with and to culminate in 20 wins and a great season. Yeah, no, the, I don't know if there will ever be a senior class at the University of Portland that had as much impact as these guys did. And, you know, I, I tease them. I say there'll be better classes coming up, you know. <laughs> there'll be, but in terms of us coming in four years and, and turning the program around and really building a solid foundation, these guys have been outstanding in terms of not only on-court production, but changing the culture and establishing a winning attitude. Um, and now they're moving on to the next stages of their lives, and some of them will get to play basketball, and uh, we're excited for them. What did it mean to lose Nick? Losing Nick was, was you know, it, it really hurt us. Um, you know, three years in a row, our leading scorer, uh, at times our leading rebounder from the guard position, just he was a guy that could get stats and make plays. And um, defensively, he'd gamble and do some things. And so defensively, we stayed solid. But but sure enough, even on the defensive end, you missed his, his ability to make a play, a guy that when you're, when you're up against it as a winner that he was, and still his now that he's healthy, uh, he'd make plays that would, would win for you. And offensively, mm -hmm. a guy that could break people down off the dribble. We could shoot the ball great when we got out in transition, found shooters, but late in the clock, like against St. Mary's in the, in the uh, tournament, someone that could break you down and get a, get a shot, uh, we really missed Nick. So he's healthy, though, and he's going to move on and, and play overseas, and he'll be the guy that you'll be reading about 12 years from now still playing somewhere. He's a diehard. And Eric, that's nice because you know you're sending out this group of kids that helped you some signature wins early this year, top 25 ranking, things that are milestones for your program. And these guys, you know, I was glad that they appreciated a good year. We were 4-10 and 10, mm -hmm. uh, their first year, their freshman year. Ethan, uh, Robin, and Taishi came in mm -hmm. as true freshmen four mm -hmm. years ago when we were 4-10. and 10. This year we were 10-4 and four in conference. Uh, you know, we had higher goals than what we did this year uh, in terms of maybe really truly competing for a championship and, and, and you know, being a little bit more in the mix for uh, the NCAA tournament. But uh, when you step back and look at the growth of the program in this class, we're right on track, and they did a tremendous job getting there. So uh, we're excited to have them uh, as part of our program and an alumni of our program mm -hmm. forever. All right, so going forward, opportunity. Jared Stoll took real advantage of an opportunity, didn't he? Yeah, Jared Stoll, you know, stepped up his production, um, you know, and, and led the nation in three-point shooting percentage. Uh, and he's a guy that you look at from a coaching perspective and you wonder how many people are, are looking at him going, why isn't coach letting him shoot more? You know, and, <laughs> and I do let him shoot. He, he's got the green light. No one has ever, let me go on record, is no one has ever had a green light as much as Jared Stoll. Campbell passes right over top, and that creates an open look for Stoll, who will make that almost every time. Both teams are shooting the ball well and taking care of the ball. And Jared Stoll, maybe the best shooter of them all. Only six on the shot clock. Stoll realizes it and gets it to spin in. Handles it beautifully. Stoll, yes for three. Outside of the lane, the hook shot, he just didn't have enough on it. Stoll open again. You cannot leave him. He'll do that every time. And Jared Stoll is feeling it. He wants the ball. He'll get it, and he'll shoot it again. And he makes another one. How about this kid? Jared Stoll is just a remarkably consistent shooter. Jared Stoll is not only hitting these shots, but he's calling for it. You just have those nights sometimes. If you're a shooter, you know when you're feeling it. And he's feeling it from every place on the court. You name it. He, he can is. shoot it, you know, and so he can shoot whatever he wants. Mm -hmm. But the kid's so hard on himself. He doesn't like to miss. And he just, um, what I love about Jared's game is his he's increased his physicality and I tease him because he's gone from scrawny to skinny to wiry mm -hmm. uh, he's sort of now he's wiry and he'll hit somebody and he'll block off and he blasted a guy from St. Mary's and got a foul knocked him out of bounds and that was made the highlight tape for the post game <laughs> thing at our place because he, he brings a physicality to his game now 
saying it that way might be a stretch, but he's willing to bang a little bit more, to defend and find other ways to win. His next step, as you look going forward, is to be able to create for his own shot a little bit more uh, and, and develop a little more offensive one-on-one -on -one skills. Uh, the other person that stepped up, you know, you talk about Nick being out, was uh, Nemanja Mitrovic. Uh, he didn't play our first few games in the conference when Nick was playing, and then he ended up playing, you know, 20-plus the last few, and he was scoring, and so he'll be back as a junior, uh, and he can shoot it a little bit as well. So, um, no, we're excited. So, Eric, now that you've built something and you have a couple of these key players for you this, that are coming back, just give us an idea of where the program stands, your expectations for this coming year. You know, I'm excited. Last year at this time, we were going, getting ready for a foreign tour. We were, we were, uh, we were building, and but the puzzle was the same. I had the same pieces. I'm looking at it going, okay, what? mix them all up and say, okay, what can we do with this puzzle and make it incremental, you know, mm -hmm. significantly better. And it's hard, but this this year we've got some key pieces returning uh, in Jared Stoll at the two, Luke Sigma at the four, Kramer Knutz at the five, our mm -hmm. starters, and then J Jason Hannibal and Nemanja Mitrovic uh, really came on toward the end of the year. So we have some key pieces. We've got seven new players uh, coming in next year, one JC player and six true freshmen, maybe possibly redshirt one. And so we've got a lot of fresh blood. And I was actually talking to Luke Sigma the other day in a player meeting, and he said, you know, I'm just, we're just looking forward to some new guys, you know, just sort of invigorate the program. And so now we're at a stage where, um, where we're looking to try to get better. And I think expectations won't be, won't be as high. And it'll be, November will be an interesting mm -hmm. month because players come for summer school in July, a lot of new guys, and they have to contribute four months later because there'll be a lot of opportunity. So it'll be interesting. Do you feel like you're established now that you can build? Yeah, no, you definitely, um, it's been an interesting four years in terms of being very dynamic in terms of how you view what the program needs to be focusing on in each given year, each, each given off season, the focus has been different. Um, and, th and now we're looking at, um, uh, in terms of our team, some different problems and different challenges. Even recruiting wise, we're getting, um, we're getting in a lot more homes, frankly. We're talking to a lot more people and a, a different caliber of student athlete that we were four years ago, although we did great with the ones we, we got. Um, but now it's a different, you know, recruiting against different people and how to take advantage of that and what pieces to fill. Can we get more athletic? Can we, can we truly become uh, a contender in this conference? And, um, you know, and, and that's the optimistic glasses half full side mm -hmm. is how can we really get up there and really contend for a championship um, and then the the half empty side is how do we make sure we stay in the top half you know because there's a lot of good teams and, and everyone's trying to do the same thing and so it's trying to depends on your a lot of times <laughs> that perspective depends on your mood that day whether you're just trying to stay up to the top half or you're actually really optimistic and going for it I think we're right there where the future is ours to, to work for but the second part of that, Eric, is interesting because really it, it is kind of a half full view of the conference. It is a lot tougher for you to stay where you are. Yeah, I mean, and I, you know, having, having been rock bottom in the conference a few years ago, I understand, and then having sort of worked our way up, the difference isn't that much, you know, and, and the difference in our conference between third and seventh or third and sixth mm -hmm. is really not that, third and sixth there really isn't that much different in uh, a, a lot of years. And so you've got, it's a lot of little things. A lot of times it's senior leadership. Last year we were able to take advantage of senior leadership. Uh, that's why we were very good early, you know, because we were a veteran team and we I think we got better until Nick got hurt we were getting better uh, and and that's a dynamic that takes place every year and this year you know next year the tables will be turned as the conference gets older and we get younger how do we overcome that you know and how do we, we do that but it's a great league uh, to be competing in it's a great group of coaches impressive student athletes across the board it's just a lot of fun to to play that chess game and try to see how we can stay up there and even get to the top mm -hmm.